And how did this all come right. Um January of 2011, our son Tyler had just turned eight years old, and he was complaining his legs hurt a little bit. But at first, we really didn't think much of it. And then we noticed when we walked out of a restaurant for dinner one night, he fell. And couldn't really understand what was going on. And then over the next four or five days, it progressed to the point where he would cry every time he tried to step. Uh, he couldn't walk hardly at all. He couldn't go down the steps. Took him to a couple local hospitals, and they gave a diagnosis of sinus infection and growing pains, but we knew there was something else. And um, we went to our pediatrician, and he tried to step up on the little stool to get up onto the bed, and he fell right over. He couldn't do it. And uh, at that point, the doctor said, you know what, he's got to go. They checked all of his reflexes. Nothing was working when they, you know, used the hammer on the knees and the arms. N nothing was working. So they said, there will be a bed ready for you at the Beagley campus for Akron Children's. Go straight there. And um, we got here. The doctors kind of thought, eh, we might have an idea of a couple of different things. Let's do some tests. So they ran some tests, and it narrowed it down. And they thought, there's a good chance it's Guillain-Barre syndrome. And that's uh, an autoimmune disorder that basically what it does is it eats at the nerve endings, and it paralyzes from the feet up to the top of the body. And um, we were here that day. By the next morning, I had just left to go get clothes. and. My wife called and said they just called Air Bear. They got to take him, and uh, I didn't understand. I'm thinking, you know, he was talking to me this morning. Well, it was his breathing started uh, getting less and less, and it was uh, attacking into his respiratory system. And you know, thank God he was here because if he would have been at home sleeping, he wouldn't have made it. He would have never woke up. And. Uh, we got down to Akron's main campus and they did some more tests. They did the spinal tap, which gives you the 100%. That's what it is. It's the protein level in their spinal fluid. And it's supposed to be like 30 to 40. His was in the 180s. And they said, yeah, that's definitely it. And um, they got him on some different medicines. There's no cure for it, but they can slow it down and stop the progression. And then it works its way back out. But at the time that we were there, they told us, you know, we know, you know, we've heard because we talked to all the doctors and the nurses, and they knew that he loved sports and he played baseball and football and soccer. And they said, you know, don't, don't plan on him doing anything this year. Just worry about him getting better and let's try to get him to walk again because he was in a wheelchair when we left. He was uh, had to learn how to walk again. He had to learn how to eat, swallow. He had to do occupational physical therapy. So we got him home in February of 11, 2011, and once we got him home, we started bringing him to the Beagley campus here in Boardman three times a week for therapy, and the therapy department here is just so amazing. He still asks to go see them because they did such a good job with him, and not only did we get him out of the wheelchair pretty fast and out of his walker, he was back to school in a month, and by May, he was on the baseball field, wow. and you know I, I can still remember going in to sign his little brother up to play baseball that year, and he said, Dad, I want to play, and I said, Son, you're still on a walker, you, I don't know if you can, yeah. and he said, I will, and he did, and he made the All-Stars, and uh, he played tackle football that year, and I mean, just wow. from where they told us we were at to where he got to was, was just a miracle, and you know, without this hospital and everybody here, never would have happened. What an amazing recovery. And you were so impressed that now you've done a fundraiser. Tell us about the fundraiser and most importantly, how much you raised. Um, last year we started it. We did a police versus fire softball tournament with local departments and uh, we did it again this year. And this year we had a, a rough time because the weather was really bad yeah. and we were able to raise $1,175. Wow. That's terrific. What a great story. 888-746-9890. Help the Miracles and Promises Radio Thought on Mix 98.9.